I never understood the popularity of the Young Turks. Every time I watch the Young Turks, I feel like I'm watching high school kids form an opinion. One opinion that um, they've had is, uh, well, you remember when Hannibal Burris did that bit about Bill Cosby and, uh, well, it started this whole domino effect that ended with Bill Cosby in prison. The Young Turks felt that Hannibal was being unfair, not toward the victims, but toward Bill Cosby. They implied that the victims were concocting this story for attention. Sixty fucking victims. They would have had to have a three-day press conference just to get their story straight, but what's weird is they don't give that same benefit of the doubt to Woody Allen, who in his 80 years has had one child molestation allegation. Uh, I've looked into this story, and, uh, I'm going to now have a little fun, uh, with TYT. So here is some more information that, um, I found about the case, and again, these are things that never get talked about when it comes to Woody Allen and, and these allegations. So apparently Allen had been in therapy for alleged inappropriate behavior toward Dylan with a child psychologist before the abuse allegation was presented to the authorities or made public. Also, um, Nia Farrow and Dylan, I mean, and Woody Allen were seeing Dylan's therapist because they are her parents. And parents consult their child's therapist. It's pretty standard. Um, that same therapist said that there was no indication, in her opinion, that uh, Woody Allen had any, uh, gave any uh, sexual, uh, that there was a no sexual nature to his attention towards uh, Dylan. The uh, inappropriate behavior she's taking out of context. The inappropriate behavior was in reference to the fact that he was giving an inordinate amount of attention, non-sexual attention, toward one kid at the expense of the other kids who he didn't really know because, uh, like most pedophiles, Woody Allen didn't like being around kids. Which, by the way, that idea that he doesn't hang around, that he never was around those kids, this complaint that she's making, that uh, he was never around those kids. I always wonder how that jibes with this whole uh, idea that he raised Sun Yi. Oh, one more thing. That same therapist, right around the time of the allegations, reported that, uh, that Mia was uh, a danger to herself and to others. And by the way, I have to apologize. I'm going to be using these people's first names as if I know them. It just saves time. So Alan refused to take a polygraph test. Take that for what it is. It might not mean anything, but he did refuse. Also, he had changed his... Wait. He didn't refuse a polygraph test. He took a polygraph test. He passed a polygraph test. Mia refused a polygraph test story in regard to whether or not he had been in the attic right he said that he had not been in the attic it's all made up and then uh investigators found his hair there and then he changed his story no, that's so so that's pretty that's pretty damning that's not pretty damning at all that's not damning at all where's the transcript of this conversation who are these investigators where's the hair where's the dna test on the hair that doesn't exist how come none of this stuff was presented in a trial of any sort? But let's buy your story. Let's take your story for granted. Let's 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 play along with this. Woody Allen in his fifties has a light bulb moment and suddenly decides he's gonna molest a child for the first time in his life. He decides to do it during a custody hearing. He goes to a house full of Mia Farrow cult members, three of which are adults, all of whom were told to keep a close eye on him. He takes the seven-year-old kid. He goes up a flight of stairs. He goes into Mia Farrow's bedroom. He goes into Mia Farrow's closet. He opens up a crawl space inside of the closet, stuffs the kid into the crawl space. He crawls in behind her. He finger pops her, drags her out, takes her down, completely unnoticed by anyone there, 
because it wasn't reported for 24 hours after that. Now, all this is all done within, by the way, a span of 5 to 20 minutes, depending on who you ask and what day of the week, because they all changed their stories. One of them said it was 5 minutes, 20 minutes, and then just retracted the whole thing altogether and said that he never left her sight. And actually, Moses Farah, who was 14 at the time, said that he never left their sight. So... But let's say all this is true. If they scoured that attic, how come they never found fingerprints? Was he wearing gloves? How come no clothing fibers? Was he wearing a hazmat suit and he just forgot the hat? Try again, moron. Uh, but there's more. Um, so the... the the investigation by uh, the Yale New Haven Hospital is the investigation that he brings up time and time again. He makes it seem as though that is the most credible investigation. He makes it seem like that's the most credible investigation because that's the most credible investigation. That's the invest. That's one of the top sex abuse investigating teams in the country. That's the ones that that's the one that the cops use. They've got many many awards from cops a lot of the time. So. Yeah, that's why he makes it seem that way, because that's the one the state uses. And the results indicated that, you know, Dylan Farrow uh, was being coached. However, the judge that was essentially hearing this case uh, did not believe the credibility of this investigation, said that... Oh, okay. And where did he get his degree in child psychology? Oh, he doesn't have one? Oh, he's just a fucking judge? There were uh, issues with it and essentially threw it out of court. He didn't throw it out of court. If he threw it out of court, Woody Allen would have been in cuffs at some point. Uh, did not uh, believe the validity of it. Um, and by the way, the prosecutor that I had uh, mentioned earlier also questioned the validity of it. Wow, a judge and a prosecutor with fucking opinions. Guess what? You know what? Um... The prosecutor didn't believe the validity of the Central Park Five's defense. Same thing with the West Memphis Three. Same thing with that guy who got uh, executed for in Texas for murdering his own kids. Yeah, prosecutors are full of shit. That's what they get paid to do. They get paid to lie. And so there was another investigation done uh, to see whether or not she had been coached. And that investigation uh, found that, no, she, she is not changing her story. She is consistent. There's no evidence to believe that she has been coached. And the Wrong. Wrong. And you can look this up. There was a second investigation. It was done by the New York Child and Family Services. And they concurred with New Haven's findings. Anna just straight up lied google it judge ultimately came to that conclusion as well now look i'm saying all this so oh by the way no the conclusion the judge actually came to was there wasn't enough evidence to bring woody allen to trial much less get a conviction you have the full scope of of what's known in this story you don't have the full scope here's the full scope Actually, the full scope would probably take an hour, but I'd like to bring up something that is kind of important to this story, or to more to the point of Anna's point of view, and why it's so peculiar to me. <sighs> Mia Farrow has countless child abuse allegations leveled against her by Moses and Sun Yi. Now... Let's explain Mia Farrow here. Mia Farrow has a little cult. She likes to export or import children from other countries. She often, uh, they're usually uh, brown, and uh, if the able-bodied brown skin kids, what they like, to, what they, uh, what she usually has them do is service her and her white children. They are essentially servants. The disabled ones she usually puts on display as part of her campaign for sainthood. Um, according to Moses Farrell, she likes to brainwash children. Uh, if kids do not repeat or parrot her beliefs or what she says, she has a tendency to punish them physically and psychologically. 
She's been known to drag blind kids down flights of stairs and lock them in closets. She took a paraplegic kid and locked him in a shed overnight. She beat Soon Yi with a telephone. She threw heavy vases and heavy objects at her head on countless occasions. She used to strip Moses down naked in front of her other sibling, in front of his other siblings in order to humiliate him. She liked to beat him with a belt often. It's no wonder that she's had two of these children commit suicide, and one was abandoned by her and died of AIDS, broke in a hospital alone. But oddly enough, Anna doesn't mention any of these allegations. She's so dismissive of them that she doesn't even question them. Now... You can't believe Dylan and also believe Soon Yi and Moses. But let's look at Soon Yi and Moses. Soon Yi has a master's degree in special education from the University of Columbia in New York. Moses is a doctor. He's a family therapist now. That's their qualifications. Dylan is, uh, well, she's a stay-at-home mom who dabbles in writing. And by dabbles, I mean failing. And by stay-at-home mom, I mean loser. But somehow, her credibility, despite the fact that she's contradicted herself and been inconsistent with her story from the beginning, somehow her word is more valuable than those two other witnesses. And I can guess why. Two brown people do not equal one white person. You know, I imagine if Soon Yi walked into that studio right now, Anna would get up out of her seat and run for the fucking exits because he, she knows Soon Yi would tear her to fucking shreds, physically and intellectually. This is a woman who lived in the streets of Korea from the ages of five to fucking seven. She was scooped up by a mother who abused her for years, including, by the way, she used to hang her by her ankles so that blood would rush to her brain because she thought it would help her speak English. She thought Korean was some kind of weird animal language. But somehow, soon you survived that. She went to school. She got a master's degree. And most importantly, she stole her abuser's husband. Oh, I'm sorry, boyfriend, because Mia never put a ring on it. Soon you did. She now has children with Woody Allen. They've been together for 30 years. <sighs> That's baller. Can you imagine the audacity of somebody like Anna Kasparian who actually thinks that she knows who Soon Yi should be dating, falling in love with, and marrying better than Soon Yi does? Can you imagine the arrogance and entitlement to tell a grown-ass woman who she can and can't see? That something must be cuckoo, something must be wrong with her because of the choices she makes. Yeah, that's pretty fucking pathetic. It's pretty fucking delusional. I don't know who the fuck you think you are, dum-dum. But it ain't that. And Jank Shrek Uger is not going to get off scot-free on this either. He claimed that um, Mia Farrell found nude photos of Soon Yi when she was 17 in Woody Allen's apartment. And yet, once again, Woody Allen was never placed in cuffs. Do you know why? She did find pictures, but Soon Yi was not 17. Soon Yi was probably 19, maybe 21. So let's talk about Shrek Uger a bit. You know, he's got something in common with uh, Creepy Face Ronan Farrow. 
They both had MSNBC shows. Short-lived MSNBC shows. Now, now obviously, Ronan Farrow got his uh, his show canceled because, you know, he's got a weird-looking face and a stupid voice and a creepy fucking vibe. Jank claims he got his show canceled because he's too anti-establishment. Let me ask you this question. If, you're, if you were too edgy for MSNBC, you... Then how the fuck did you get hired in the first fucking place? Didn't they look at your reel? I don't think anyone's ever confused TYT with being edgy and anti-establishment. It's pretty fucking mainstream, neoliberal, down-the-road, boring fucking shit. Now, Michael Brooks or Sam Cedar or Chapo Trap House, that might be a little too edgy for MSNBC, but if any of those fucking people had a show, that thing would be a fucking hit. A worldwide sensation, especially Michael Brooks. Fact of the matter is, is you don't, TYT does not hit the bar for broadcasting. I mean, we can complain about mainstream media. We all know Noam Chomsky and stuff like that. Mainstream media, it's bullshit, it's corporate, whatever. But at least there's a certain kind of bar for actually articulating and formulating complete fucking sentences. You can't just fucking get on television like a blubbering fucking oaf going, Of course! You're a blustering ox. You're a dumb fucking jock who can't even formulate a complete sentence. You're funny looking. You're dumb sounding. You're more suited to fucking climbing the Empire State Building and swatting at airplanes. Anyways, I'm going to end this with a joke about TYT. Um, I heard Anna and Jank were uh, doing a remake of uh, Beauty and the Beast. They're going to call it, eh, and the Beast. <laughs>